and her brother, her two brothers are older than she is, and she wants to see them again before they die. <laughs> and anyway, I'm delighted to have Leanne here as my guest. And she is not a member of Rotary, but she is a pharmacist in San Antonio, in the San Antonio area. Could you tell us the pharmacy that you're working for now? I'm just, um, I'm doing Alamo Specialty Pharmacy. Alamo Specialty Pharmacy. Pharmacy, there's nine of them. Yay! Thank you, Jack. Thank you so much. Any others? You're going to, you're going to introduce them. Yes, we have for speaking. Thank you, Jim. Okay, yes, we're glad to have you. And uh, Bill's preacher, I'm sorry, they, he just kept saying he's my preacher. I didn't catch your name. Bill Allen. Bill Allen. Okay, uh, Bill's preacher, Bill Allen, you are in our prayers, and so are you, dear. <laughs> we understand that's a lot of a tremendous undertaking. We're glad to have you as a guest. We hope you enjoy your time with us today so much that you might decide to become one of us. We love having guests, we like welcoming new faces, and we like to make them a part of our family while they are here. Now, okay, for the past two weeks, this has been a part that we haven't really had a whole lot. We have definitely missed this. I know I have, but don't worry. The wait is over. Now I'd like to welcome to the podium for this week in history, <laughs> Paul Glazer. <laughs> This very hour, it was 68 degrees in Estes Park, Colorado. No, no. And it is a small miracle that I'm here now. Uh, today, the 17th of August, 1987, Rudolf Hess, once Adolf Hitler's top deputy and the last living member of Hitler's inner circle, is found dead at the age of 93 in Spandau Prison, apparently from suicide. He was serving a life sentence. He was he was in the 600 cell prison all by himself, a lone inmate from 1966 until his death by suicide. The prison was demolished shortly after Hess and Hess's death, replaced with a shopping center in order to avoid the prison becoming the site of the prison becoming a neo-Nazi shrine. On the 18th of August, 1991. In what would become the opening paragraph of the last chapter of the Soviet Union, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev was placed under house arrest in a coup attempt by hardliners of his own government. The coup ultimately failed and Gorbachev returned to the Kremlin, but the damage was done and the Soviet Union dissolved 16 weeks later on December 8th. On the 19th of August, 1909, the first race was held at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, 12,000 spectators watched Austrian engineer Louis Schweitzer win with an average speed of 57.4 miles per hour. Today's average speed is just a bit less. Average speed is just a bit less than 200 miles per hour. On the 20th of August, 1920, legendary Olympic athlete Jim, Jim Thorpe, together with six other men, met at the Huffmobile Auto Dealership in Canton, Ohio, to organize the American Professional Football Conference. League play began on September 26th. The league would later change its name to the National Football League. On the 21st of August, uh, 1959, President Dwight Eisenhower signed a bill making Hawaii the 50th state of the Union. He concurrently signed an executive order that arranged the stars of the U.S. flag in nine staggered rows, alternating between six and five stars. The order proclaimed the flag would become official on July 4th, 1960. And on Tuesday, the 22nd of August, 1775, responding to news of the Battle of Bunker Hill, King George III of England issued a, quote, Proclamation for Suppressing Rebellion and Sedition and ordered all officials of the British Empire to, quote, use their utmost endeavors to withstand and suppress such rebellion. The proclamation undercut those in the colonies who favored coming to terms with the crown. And the Declaration of Independence became inevitable by July of the next year. And finally, on the 23rd of August, 
1963, the Beatles released She Loves You in the United Kingdom. It was the first Beatles song to receive widespread airplay in the United States. It went on to become one of the five Beatles songs to occupy the top five spots in the Billboard Top 100 simultaneously. That has never been done before, probably will never be done again. Birthdays in the coming week, starting today, actor Robert De Niro turns 80 today. Actor Robert Redford turns 87 tomorrow. Former President Bill Clinton turns 77 on Saturday. Today, show weatherman Al Roker turns 69 on Sunday. And then finally, how many Irene Muccini fans do we have here? Yeah, Cheney, Barbara Eaton, turns 92. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, and that's this week in history. Wow. Thank you, Paul. Wow, Robert De Niro's 80. That doesn't seem possible. <laughs> but it is. Okay. All right, Rotary Business. We've got quite a few announcements. The Tyler Area Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours. Henry Bell, I saw you come in. Great. Ah, oh, there you go. All right, Tyler Area Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours is Thursday, August the 24th at Goodwill Industries. It's going to be from 5 to 7 p.m., and that is located at 409 West Locust. We are members of the Chamber of Commerce. So remember, let's use that as maybe a, another time to get together and network together and fellowship together and certainly come out and support them. Also, we have to, we have another opportunity at 5 o'clock somewhere. That's going to be Tuesday, August 29th at Javi's Treehouse. We've had those several times. They always end up being fun events. Those are good events to bring friends that have asked about Rotary or have said, hey, I don't really know who else in Rotary. I got that question a lot whenever I started coming to Rotary meetings and before I became a member. Some of my friends said, well, I, who's in it? That's a great way to bring them and then they can meet a lot of us and they can uh, become friends with other people. It's a really good way to network and to introduce people who might be interested in membership. We do need your July volunteer hours. Please email them to Holly. You've heard me say this before. That's any volunteer work that you do. I know that there are several churches represented here by our membership. So if you volunteer at your church. And then school has started back. So if you are a member of the PTA at your child's school or you are a part of that, maybe you like to be you're involved in the classroom, certainly keep up with that and, and keep up with those volunteer hours that you do in school. I don't do, I don't volunteer at my child's school. I do try to show up to as many events as I can, but I am so happy that school is back in session. <laughs> it's just, a, it's been a really great week. I know several of you have kids and grandkids that started school this week, and uh, it's just, it's really nice to finally get back into a routine. I wanted to send mine to school on Monday. <laughs> just tell them to walk slow. <laughs> Woo. But, Yes, okay. Reminder, bring your grocery sacks for the East Texas Food Bank's mobile food pantry. That is an ongoing project that we're doing. Grocery sacks, those plastic ones, just wad them up, bring them. We have a collection box out front. We definitely want to keep collecting those. The food bank has an ongoing need for those. Volunteer sign-up opportunities for the East Texas Symphony in the Park on the week on September 2nd at Birdfield Park. They're now available. They're up at the front when you come in. That sign-up sheet is there. If you didn't get to sign up for that on your way in, it will certainly be available on the way out. And you can sign up for our vocational visit to Breckenridge Village. That visit is going to be September 7th. Box lunches are going to be pre-ordered. And you need to look at the pre-order sheet and check what kind of box lunch you want if you're going to go to that one. Get your order form from Holly and check off what kind of box lunch you want. Give it back to her by August 31st. That way we'll be able to order them in time. The cost for that is $20. We have a board meeting tomorrow. Our board meeting is monthly. They're always at the Ultra Federal Credit Union. That's right there at the corner of 155 in the Louvre, right there across from Wendy's. 
that's also where our wonderful treasurer Jennifer Dobbins works. The meeting begins promptly at 12 noon. Everyone is welcome to come uh, and listen to uh, how things go. You're welcome to see if you've ever been interested in being a board member. I would like to encourage you to come and hear about all the topics that we'll be talking about. We have a full agenda. And I was telling someone earlier, I want to think it was it was Greg, but all throughout the weeks leading up to the board meeting, I get emails and people say, can we have, can we have five minutes? Can we have 10 minutes? Can we do have this? And I'm like, okay, well, we're down to about 30 seconds now. But we do have a lot to discuss in our board meetings. And your board of directors are very, very busy to talk about the issues that are important to you and to get things going. Obviously, we have a Christmas parade coming up, so we'll be talking a little bit about that. It's a really good way to learn about the different things that we do. Okay, program for August the 17th is yep. Connor. No, 24th, sorry. Sorry, the 24th. Sorry, it says 17th down here. I just read it. And I thought but I I'm going to struggle with this last name. Connor Herterick, is that right, Herterick? Okay, I'm trying, and he's with Pre in Preservation, Texas. All right, that's going to be, I'm going to pronounce that correctly, but if I did, we'll get with them to see if He's the husband of the new historic Tyler executive director. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so the new director, uh, executive director for historic That's Tyler. her husband. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, that'll be a great, okay, looking forward to that program. Maybe did I pronounce that right? Yeah, something something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, we, okay. we, we had a hard time. Hard time. Okay. Okay, now to introduce our guest, today's guest is Mr. Jason your president elect who will be taking over for me whenever I am done up here at the podium, Colby McElwee. Today, I am introducing Dr. Dina Shepard. She is the provost and vice president for academic and student affairs at Tyler Junior College. Prior to joining TJC, Dr. Shepard served as the vice president of instruction at Lone Star College Sci-Fair. She holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration from Stephen F. Austin University, a Master's of Science degree in Training and Development from the University of Houston, and a Doctorate of Education in Higher Education Leadership from Sam Houston State University. Dr. Shepard is active in her community, serving on local and national boards, her passion is facilitating student success and working with individuals on her team who have the same passion. She values a positive culture and in investing in those she leads. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Shepard. Thank you, Dr. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The old teacher and me may come out. I'm going to expect some things back. Okay. Um, well, uh, Dr. Boucher and I. I'll, I'm going to. I'm going to introduce Cliff. And I didn't write up anything. I apologize, Cliff. But this is Dr. Cliff Boucher. He is our dean of engineering, math, and science at TJC. And uh, we're going to co-present today. I'm going to do the first half, and then I'll throw it to Cliff. But I want you to know, as you hear some of what I share. Um, Cliff was our instrumental person at TJC that got this rolling. We had a question come to us from A&M. They asked us, and we're like, well, of course we want to be involved in that. And then Cliff and his team just took it and ran. So he's going to give you more of the nuts and bolts of the program in a little bit. But um, I'll jump in and, and kind of give you an overview. We'll leave plenty of time for questions at the end. But um, we're honored to be here. Um, anytime we get a chance to talk about our favorite place to work, um, we're, we're there. So um, TJC is an amazing place. I know that we have friends in the room. We have our former president in the room. And um, so I'm going to jump in, give you a little bit. I know this is small. I'm happy to send um, my whole PowerPoint if you want to look at it. But this is just an overview. I'll send it to you. <laughs> overview of TJC. So um, as of this fall, we are sitting at just over 11,000 students right now. We still have 11 days. And yes, we count every day. We have 11 days until classes start. Um, so that is really good. That is up about 6% from last fall. So we're fully out of the COVID cloud and uh, doing really, really well. So very proud of that. But um, our highest so far has been a little over 12,000. So we feel like we'll get back there, maybe even this semester, but we'll see. 
we're a legacy college. We have been around almost 100 years, um, which is just a whole lot of history and tradition, and that's part of what we love about the institution. Um, so you can look at some things on the left. Really, I want to talk about our students. Um, our students tell us that TJC was their first choice. About 97% say that was my first choice. It wasn't my backup. It was where I wanted to go first. How many TJC alum do we have in the room? Just amazing. Okay, so if I was standing in Houston, Texas, where I was for 17 years, and I asked that question, maybe one person would say um, they went to Lone Star College, I fear, right? Uh, so we just love that about TJC. Um, so people choose us first, and because of that, we feel obligated and dedicated to providing programs that meet what our community needs and what our students are looking for at a low cost um, and, and a really good value. Not cheap, not free, but a good value, right? Um, so, uh, of course, TJC is very affordable. We have a slide in a minute that compares us to A&M, and you'll see what this program um, does for our local students. But like I said, I'll send this. I know that yellow's not showing up very well. Um, this is our TJC district, and I wanted to share this map. Um, if you can't see this, that says Kilgore College. It just gives you some comparison of the region that we cover. And I share this because our reach is far, right? We have what we call our central campus, which is the one off of Baxter and Fifth, but we also have other locations across the region. We have Glendale North, we have Rust, Jacksonville, and we have our TJC West campus over on the loop. Um, so our reach is far. So this program that we're gonna tell you about today with A&M, um, we feel like there will be students in Tyler proper who will sign up for this program, but we think the reach is um, well beyond our central campus. <coughs> So let me jump in. So as I said, we were approached by Texas a and I don't know, Cliff, a year ago maybe? About a year ago. Uh, we, that's pretty quick for us to move one year in higher education. That's not too bad for us. We're usually pretty slow. Um, so they approached and said, hey, we've done these engineering academies across the state, and we think we have a gap in the East Texas region. We don't have an academy there. We'd love to partner with TJC. So basically what the... Um, the academies launched in 2015, and you can see where they are. They're all over the state of Texas at other community colleges. Um, it is the first engineering transition program of its kind in the United States. So it's very innovative, very different. Basically, it's a co-enrolled program. So when a student is accepted into the engineering program at a and and there is an application process, Cliff may share a little more about that, um, they are Aggies and Apaches from day one. So they are co-enrolled. They are physically taking classes at our campus uh, here in Tyler, but they are also an Aggie and have all the rights um, that any other A&M student would have. Reference, we've had some ethical dilemmas, though. We could. But the engineering courses that they take, so of course a student has to take their core basics, however you want to describe it, um, but the engineering courses that they are going to take, some are taught by our faculty correct in the early intro stages or you were talking yeah the early intro stages but then they have a dedicated professor from a and engineering schools that come here on our campus and teach and cliff will tell you about their space in a minute um, and then after two years they transition to college station to a and um, if a student says you know i just can't make that step because we've had a lot of questions about is that going to hurt other programs in our area will it hurt our own tjc program ut tyler program we did a lot of research before we ever signed the paper with A&M, and we talked to all these other schools, and what they shared that when A&M came and partnered with their school, it helped everybody in the region. The engineering enrollment went up at the community college. It also went up at the local regional college, which is UT Tyler for us, and we got more students in the A&M tracks because there is a shortage of engineers, and this has been an amazing program to try to help with that shortage. So um, after two years, they do transfer, and then I'll share in just a second um, where they go. Um, this is the A&M slide. So this is the uh, principles that they base the program on. They're all about access. They want to get diverse students into this program, maybe students who would never, as a freshman, start at A&M. They could not afford it. The housing, the tuition, couldn't do any of that, but could certainly start at a community college and then transition. They do have scholarships um, that they provide students. We have scholarships at TJC, so 
when you look at this from start to finish, it's a really affordable option for our students to get an engineering degree. And I'm going to show you some data in a second. Their completion rates are amazing in these particular programs. Um, this gives you a flavor of the students that are in the programs. 19% um, female. Do we have any engineers in the room? Engineers. Okay. Oh, there we go. One. Um, but as you know, in that field, um, there are not often a lot of females in that field. So um, this program is doing a great job of diversifying their student body. All right. So here it gives you a sense of how much they save per semester because when they come to TJC, they do all their basics with us. They do a, a little bit of their engineering, but then they are also not paying for housing because they're typically living at home or at least local. Um, so they're saving $4,100 a semester. Um, they graduate from Texas A&M. They have a diploma from A&M, and they can go into um, one of the engineering tracks. Um, smaller classes are always a benefit of the community college. I mean, we typically have 20 or fewer students. That's our average. Some classes are larger, some smaller. Um, but, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll, I'm going to pass it to Cliff. Cliff's going to talk a little bit about how long it takes to get through the program and then more specifics about um, the different types of engineering programs. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so, for those, how many of you in here, no, I shouldn't call you out. So I'm not going to do that. I was going to say, how many of you in here went to college? It was probably most everybody. <laughs> but I'm not going to call you out if you didn't go to college. Because you know, a lot of people now, workforce programs are so important. Um, but as far as, I'm going to start in the middle slide of this slide. Most of you probably know, if you have kids or something that went through college, you went through college, whatever, that four years is kind of our standard that we think of as far as universities and the time that it takes to you know start and finish. Um, and then as far as community college, uh, you, the way that we traditionally think of it is it can add on as much as two years to your actual degree uh, if you start off at a community college. Uh, that, that's a give or take a little bit depending on the courses, the, you know, the, your degree plan, the things that you're doing. Uh, but the big part of community colleges, as, we were, as Dr. Shepard was just mentioning, is the, the money savings as you're generating your core courses. I mean, I started at Tyler Junior College. My parents, I wouldn't be here, I always say that, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for TJC because my parents met in Jenkins Hall in 1956. Um, and so I'm actually a product literally of TJC. So I'm kind of excited, I, I'm always proud of that fact. So I've been roaming the halls, even though my mom is the college nurse and from 74 to 96, I roamed the halls when I was little bitty. So I, I'm a proud, uh, graduate of, of TJC, but when you when you stop and you look at the actual academies, because it is a co-enrollment program, they are applying to TJC. We pre-qualify them, and then they apply to A and M. They are both an A and M, basically student, and they are a TJC student. And you're putting these together. And we will have an A and M faculty member. They're in the process of hiring right now. They have a great candidate pool. We're looking forward to the person that they bring to T, uh, TJC, Tyler. They will live here in Tyler. They will teach here in Tyler. They'll do the research here in Tyler. Um, and because of that, the students that enter into the academy, they get the benefit of the TJC, the tuition with all the core courses, but they are taking the A and M engineering course. Um, so they're co-enrolled as, as we like to say that. And then after their two years, we don't say they transfer to A&M, the way they like to say it is they transition to the main campus. So they are an A&M student, they have an ID that we actually have them set up, I believe for their first tailgate party. For those of you in here that went to A&M, you can do the whoop. Uh, we have our first tailgate party, A&M is gonna basically bust them all the way up to a or down to A&M. They're going to treat them to a tailgate, a football game, and then bring them back. So they're going to be doing things like this all year long to make them feel part of the A&M community. It's really neat. And all you have to do is enroll as an engineering student to go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and another, one of the other things about community colleges, um, you know, 
if you've been part of a community college, heard the, the discussions about a junior college, community college is the, and Dr. Shepard mentioned, small class size. And because of the small class size, there's a lot of faculty investment into their students. And because of that, the success rates are incredible. So when they started looking at the academy students versus their traditional students starting and finishing their engineering degree at A&M, uh, the retention rate for those in the academy on the one year, the first year is 89%. That's, in, that's actually very incredible. 87% so for two year and 81% uh, for the third year. Now I'll compare that to what happens with the traditional student doing their engineering all the way through at A&M. The one-year retention is actually 81% versus 77% at the two-year versus the 75% at the three-year. So the academy students having the benefit of that engagement in the classroom with the faculty at the community college, junior college, their <laughs> success rate and the, the ability to become an engineer later on goes way up. And that's pretty incredible. So again, when you look at those that are graduating from the academies, they're, they're all throughout uh, the fields. Uh, anywhere from computer, uh, electrical, mechanical, civil, petroleum, uh, they have a lot. And I'll show you a slide in just a second of all those different areas and degrees, uh, which is this. Um, I'm not gonna read through all of those, but you can see that there are actually 22 different majors now within the classification of engineering. And, and I'll give a kudos to A&M. One thing about A&M is that as an engineering school, they're in the top 10 in the nation. Yeah. It's an incredible engineering program. So a student, the way that it works is they come to TJC, they take their, their very basic engineering courses as a freshman and a sophomore. And then when they transition to A&M proper, uh, then they pick which one of the, the areas they want to go into. Uh, they actually, it's a match. They give their top three choices. A&M picks their students, rank the students, and then it all kind of shuffles out. If you've ever uh, known somebody to go through the medical school, dental school process, it's a big match system. It's kind of the same way. You get matched up with your actual uh, degree track. Uh, but every student, whether you're on the main campus or not, you do not actually go into your field of study until your junior year. And that's one of the things about the AM program that's also kind of unique and, and makes them very successful. So, so far since 2019, uh, they've had 410 graduates from the Engineering Academy. And whether you're in the Academy or you're at, on the main <coughs> campus, one of the things that they're proud of is that their cumulative GPA is 3.2. So they're all su being equally successful throughout the program uh, in their junior, senior years and, and graduating with a, a really solid GPA, uh, which is which is really good when you're looking at, at other fields and other areas. So I, at that, we're kind of, I, there's so many things I can talk about. Uh, one thing I do want to mention that I didn't, that Dr. Shepard alluded to, I will, I'm very proud of for TJC is that the other community colleges where the academies are, are, are have been set up is that the space are is co-utilized. So there's courses that are taught by uh, the community college and then the A&M uses that space as well. So it's kind of co-utilized. We have decided that in order to make it a little bit better for the A&M, especially if they're going to do some research there, we have dedicated space in our portal technology building to A&M. And so they're going to have a lecture room. They're going to have their lab space. They've got faculty office. They've got everything that they need to kind of create. Uh, and, and not just that, we went one step farther. And so when you walk up and the lecture room's on the right, the, the uh, lab is on the left. There's doors with an alcove. They painted that Aggie maroon. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two accent walls in there that are Aggie maroon, and they're going to bring big pictures of the engineering building and hang those up there so that everything that we can do to make them feel like they're both an Apache and an A&M Aggie, uh, we're going to do. So. With that, we'll take some questions, if there are any. Yes, sir. My son and I went down to A&M to look at the engineering program, and uh, A&M proper uses 
math as the leading out for us. And generally, it's, you know, period one, two, three. Amen, but it keeps period one, two, and three for the good for two semesters. And so you get book one and a half, and then book half and three. Is the is trig accelerated here? So, uh, as students are coming in to pre-qualify for the program, they have to be pre-cal ready. So they have to be ready for calculus. So they're going to be, most of our students we have right now, it looks like a cohort of 20 that will be starting this fall. And that's amazing given the time frame from when we started recruiting students to now. We had 52 applicants, uh, young men and women that are just, you know, really excited about the program. Unfortunately, one of the difficulties is math. Um, the students that come out of the public school and they're ready for pre-calculus. Uh, but once they do complete uh, pre-calculus, and most of them are going to be doing that in the fall, then they will be doing Cal 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so, and that follows in sync over the first two years. Well, I didn't say calculus, but came out true. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm not a math person. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, that's right. I knew exactly what you were. He's an engineer. He got it. Yes, sir. So, so, so many uh, uh, traditional universities, engineering schools, for sure, have moved to a five and sometimes six year program. Uh, but you're saying that kids are that in the academies can actually have a very high probability of finishing in four years. And that's been the case over the last couple of years in terms of the demographic? Yes. Wow. So, so nuclear engineering, petroleum engineering, I mean, some of the, I mean, mm -hmm. aerospace, yes. the whole piece, it's, wow. Yes. My nephew finished in four years. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. He's and, smart. And I'm, I, I won't pick on the universities too much. I was part of the university system, obviously. <laughs> 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 But the, the nice thing with the community college, junior college, is that I think, and I'll just say it this way, that we seem to be a little more flexible a lot uh, with the courses that they've taken in high school. Um, we'll fit those into our degree plans for the associate degree. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the students now, and it, they're, they get quite a few hours in dual credit throughout you know, their high school. And that's a good thing. But it can be a bad thing if you're transferring or you're moving on from high school to a, a college or university where they're not so ready to, to give those credits. They want you to take their math or their or whatever. And so it yep. can be a little bit problematic there, and sometimes that can kick them into a fourth year or a fifth year. So uh, uh, all but we're, we're academic path in high school, and then 1,200 SATs? Or, I mean, is there, what, what kind of candidate are you looking for? As far as as far as TJC, we're open enrollment. We do not require an SAT. Uh, what we'll do is that, like the Texas State uh, the knowledge test TSI to place them for English and math. But we don't really require the SAT or the ACT. And, and F, FYI, neither A and M. It's and not actually required for an application. So to be an academy student, you can start that path from an enrollment standpoint without. Without a specific SAT? The, the, the only thing that we were looking for in terms of our 20 uh, students in the first cohort was what were they ready for pre cal? That was the main thing. Are they ready for pre cal? <coughs> there was a question over here. Yeah, is it uh, is the program ABT accredited or whatever is current? That used to be the accreditation. So we, we actually don't have to worry about that, which is a nice thing well, because AM is the, the one who's accredited. <laughs> And ABET, they're fully, you know, as you would expect. And because they're the ones teaching and, and overseeing the engineering courses, that umbrella for, uh, is there. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doesn't TJC have a promise program where in high school you can accumulate credit that counts? TJC? Well, the TJC promise, and, and we'll give kudos to Dr. Mackey who started that program. Uh, as a freshman, as they come in and they adhere to the, the standards that are set forth by the TJC promise, and they do that for their four years, they come into TJC uh, as a freshman and their two years is paid for. 
which is really nice because if you're coming in as an academy student and you're under that umbrella, your two years of all your core courses are free and you're gonna pay $900 for each of the engineering courses. And, and you're thinking, wow, $900, that's kind of expensive. But if you knew what the actual tuition for a engineering course on the main campus is, yes. $900 is, is very cheap because you're not paying for their, their campus fees, all of the, the other fees that they add on if you're a student on the main campus. So $900 a semester for the one engineering course you take each semester is not bad as a TJC Promise student. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity. As a, as a follow up to your question, um, we also have dual credit, right? So some students, whether they're in the Promise or not, they may have taken college level classes in high school. So those can come in and count as their core as well. Um, and that's at a very reduced cost to them, sometimes even no cost, depending on the ISD they're in. So um, one thing I was gonna say about um, your question about time to degree, um, I think that's why these academy type programs are so successful because from day one, we have locked arms with the transitioning institution, right? So it's TJC and A&M. When we don't do that, and it's hard to do, right? An individual student comes, they take their two years with us, and then they try to transfer. Um, some institutions are very open-armed and, hey, we'll take just about everything. Others, not so much. Um, so that's why sometimes it adds time. But these types of programs are amazing. And you see the, you see the amazing retention and success rates. Uh, but that's because we're working for the student together from the beginning. Uh, are other academies besides engineering happening with TJC and AM? Are there other colleges that are being explored for, for other degree programs, or is it just engineering? We haven't heard, or we haven't had them ask us about any others, unless. A couple. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes we don't share everything right away, <laughs> Dr. Shepard. Uh, but in that, I, I do know, for example, there was some discussions, and we're getting Jim in on it, is involving theater. Uh, that would be a really neat academy as well, something that would center around dance or, you know, the, the actual uh, theater production. Uh, they are really interested in that. So, yes, we are looking at or thinking about what other academies do they want to start, which, by the way, Dr. D'Souza, who was one of our first contacts in the in the engineering, he left the engineering part of AM to go to the theater part. And so he's a big advocate for creating that. So yes. Yes, sir. A high school kid who graduated, graduate uh, shows up on the door of TJC paying full retail. What does it cost for a full academic loan? Go back. Go back to that slide. You probably can't see it, but I can see it. I don't want to misquote it. An in district, the one with the yellow that's on the green. Yep. Let me see. Um, that. I can't see any of that. But it's typically around, I believe it's around 2000 right at $2,000 a semester for a full, like, 15 hours. And what is it at AM? <laughs> uh, it's about, I can tell you, I can tell you it's about nine grand. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things we, that you always have to be kind of careful about is in, that, in those dollars is a lot of times they're presenting to you. So, uh, let me see where, here, 4,100. And of course, when you're thinking about two years, 16,000, the real estimate would be in terms of housing, room and board, and everything well, else. Everybody's got, everybody's got to have a place to sleep wherever they are. That's right. The question but, is, you know, what does it cost you to get the academic credits? Yes. And why would not every kid in the world do two years of TJC before going off and spending four times as much money? I think that's a Dr. Shepard. He's in the world. He has one thing. Two issues before you get 
I will say too, talking about other universities and, and transferring and all that, um, we're gonna pat ourselves on the back just a bit. Um, <laughs> as a TJC grad or a TJC student that has hours, we track them once they leave and they do so much better than their counterparts who started at those four years as a freshman yeah. uh, by double digits. And, and specifically at UT Tyler, we just got that data not long ago. Very proud of our students that transfer there. Um, they do so well, they finish and they finish on time. So they get a really good foundation. So yes, I agree with you. Everybody should go to community college first. Yes. There's, I guess. Um, my question kind of based on, on people's is, how do you, what region, district, um, do you actively recruit high school students? Do you go to other areas out of the county? And, and what is that marketing program look like? How are you going to get people to like and rent a little four bedroom something and get it to outreach? Um, sure. And are you speaking specifically about the engineering program, correct? Yeah. So, so right now, it's about two-thirds, one-third. Two-thirds of that 52 set of applicants, and it's probably pretty equally represented in the 20 cohort. About two-thirds are from outside the Tyler, East Texas area. About one-third come from our area high schools. Do you target the marketing team or recruiting? We, and, and honestly, it has been 100% A&M doing the marketing up until this point. Um, although, because by the time we signed our official agreement to enter into this, the high schools had already let out for the summer. And now, that being said, it's going to be a co-approach, um, myself and and the director of the academies will be coming down in the fall and in the spring as well. And we'll be going out uh, to the high schools to meet with the counselors and, and doing a little more pointed uh, marketing here. Because we really, you know, the idea of part of, you know, with the academies, part of that is the fact that it would be nice to recruit them from our high, you know, from here so that they go through, they get their engineering degree, and then they're looking back at Train, at Delic, at Genesis Corp you know, at, at the local uh, job market so that maybe they come back here because of that tie. So it'd be kind of nice. Yeah. So we'll be doing some pretty active marketing. Do you have to be a Texas resident to, to be in the, the academy with TJC? you like my granddaughter in Louisiana? I, I will say that they do have some international <laughs> students, um, especially down at the HCC campus, the Houston, the Houston Community College, and I think that has a lot to do with NASA and the and the individuals that they're that bringing in right there. Um, but but they, they don't. Kids from Louisiana. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yes. Kids from all over the world. Right. Yes, sir. Just curious because I know the acceptance rate at A and M is really really low. Uh, it's hard to get it down there. Uh, what's the acceptance rate for this program for those? Right now, we're we're at about forty six percent, roughly about to the academy. Um, because I and I don't know what their statistics are on getting into A and M, because they it, from on the A and M side of the application, they go through two steps. They go through an acceptance into the into the A and M university. And then they have to be accepted into the engineering program. Yep. And in that, uh, I don't know what that statistic is, but in terms of, of how many of those 52 were accepted into A&M, that I don't know. But I do know that of the 52, we're going to walk away with 20-ish in the cohort. It could be a little bit more. So it's going to be somewhere in the mid 40% which actually is very good for the engineering program at A&M. Yeah. Well, it's actually, it is easier to get into and transition into the A&M engineering program through the academy than it is on the main campus. Right. Yeah, because they have, some, they have some thresholds the students have to meet, but they will get into one of those 22 engineering programs. So, Dr. Actually, two questions, but one was, about the cost, I was proud that TJC always discouraged student loan and said, do your first two years without any loans. Uh, what would be the cost? Could you graduate through this program without student debt? 
or how likely is that? That's a good question. That's a good Maybe question. some statistics I, on, but they do have scholarships that they well, provide as well. I, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. We that's one of the things that we haven't had a discussion with. Because we did that for TJC, it seems like with the scholarships and all. What Paul was saying is a, a national crisis. It is. It is. And so if, if students can do what we did and graduate with them. And you can't make the debt disappear by writing executive. <coughs> but right. the debt's there. Yeah. Right. My other question for Dr. Shepard, uh, I saw how big the district is, and I don't think people realize it goes from Elba, Golden, all the way to West. And for the 90th anniversary, we had a 90 for 90 bike ride. Dr. Shepard, you have an avid bike rider who could leave them. I thought you were going to invite me, and I was going to politely do <laughs> <laughs> So, what are the plans for the 100 year anniversary? Wow. We're, we're turning 100 in 2026. Yeah. I didn't know coming to the Rotary Club was going to put me in the in the running to leave that. We are already starting to plan. So, uh, you know, Kim Lesnar and her marketing team, they're already starting to plan. So, you know, keep keep listening. We just went through a whole master plan process as well. And so it, it's everything's kind of coming together. So it's an exciting time at TJC. It really is. Um, we got past COVID and just having a lot of fun, helping a lot of people. I tell my team all the time, we have the best jobs in the world. We change lives every single day, and it's just so much fun. But we appreciate you listening. If you have more questions, we'll send this uh, PowerPoint, but feel free to reach out to us. And as we go through it, we'll learn more and we'll share more data. But great questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is unbelievable. And um, so many really, really good points that you brought up that brought uh, my memories of TJC when I moved here um, from South Carolina. I had already gotten a degree from a four-year college that was three hours away from home because I was all about spending my folks' money and it didn't matter to me since I wasn't paying for it. But I got to take a class in Jenkins Hall, and that class was Texas History. And um, when you come from another state, if you yes. are intent on getting a four-year degree, my four-year degree in nursing is from UT. But I would love to see some partnerships there because we need as many nurses as we possibly can get. And I think it would be wonderful to have that four-year partnership maybe with TJC and they could also go there. But before I could go to school, I had to take Texas history and I took it at TJC. <laughs> and it was really, it was really cool. And Dr. Bob was one of my teachers. Don't know Paul, you remember Dr. Bob? I talked to him about three times a week. Yes, <laughs> he was one of, and, and I didn't have, I didn't know, of course that was a brand new course for me, but TJC is such a huge partner for us, especially also at the hospital. So you guys do such wonderful, one of you have such a great outreach, and if you can save people money in getting one of these degrees, that's wonderful. I think, wow. I would love to save money right now. I'm back in school, and I'm not saving any money. <laughs> Paying for it myself. Okay. Oh, and I do want to make sure I don't forget this part. We have a certificate for both of you. The Rotary Club has made uh, donations to the Literacy Council in your honor for being speakers today, and we so appreciate you coming and giving us all that information. Okay, now it's time for the Ace of Diamonds. Oh, I left my ticket by my seat. Oh, we'll see what number is picked. Oh, okay, so for the Ace of Diamonds, remember, if you remember, you get half of what's in there, and what is our total roughly? Actually, we're over 2,000, 2,050. So if you remember, half of that is yours. If you're a guest, uh, half of a fourth of that is yours. So, and then the other fourth goes to the person that brought you. So, would you like? I had to take Texas government also. Texas government? They did not make me take Texas government. They, I had to take Texas history. The, I remember distinctly, I, and I thought that was, you know, okay, I'll do it. I mean, I've been here for 20 years. I got it now. But then there was a test, a pretest, and it had all these questions about, well, tell me what you know about Texas. So it was like, what's the state flower and what's the state song? And 
I kind of, I thought I was got a blue bonnet. I knew some stuff, but I got uh, in trouble because I put the stars at night shine big and bright. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something, that's not your stay song. <laughs> Last three, three, six, eight. That's me. Three, six, eight. It's Molly. Okay, Molly. First round. Okay. First round, second round. Got a pool. Got a pool. Okay. Yeah, this is paying for A&M tuition, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's in these. No, four diamonds. Four diamonds, okay. All right. The plot is just going to get bigger and bigger every week. So make sure you come back again next week so you can have a chance. You may buy a ticket and see if you have a chance at winning it. Now, if you don't mind, please stand as we say the four-way test of the things that we think, say, or do first. Is it the truth? Second. Is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will be beneficial to all concerned. We are adjourned. Have a wonderful day.